what? Who's here? Meredith is here after uh. a few long-awaited weeks. And she still has no idea that we're gonna go spend three days with wolves. Huh. So we should probably tell her, huh? We are right? kidnapping. Oh. There's too much stupidity. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't need me, right? <laughs> don't, don't, don't be scared. Afraid. Come to Meredith first, and then come to Tommy. They feel like it, they kind of come to me, but... That is massive. Y'all better be ready, because we're not just here. <laughs> so this is the long-awaited much requested story of how i got in a yes theory video hi i'm meredith if you're new here welcome if you clicked on this video you probably know who yes theory is their youtube channel has not only inspired me and millions of other people to get outside of our comfort zones and to make really meaningful connections with strangers to live life to the fullest but it's also gotten a lot of attention from yes theory yes theory yes theory yes theory but over seven million subscribers they're crazy but much like you guys i had been following along with their journey for about four years before I made a video. It's actually the first one on my channel that Yes Theory saw within two hours of me posting it. And then within a month, I was in LA meeting and filming with them. That experience completely changed my life. I've just had so many people ask how this happened and have so many questions about it. So I'm gonna be breaking this video down into three parts. The first is my background, how such why I made my video. And if you're interested in filming with Yes Theory or getting another creator's attention, I'm gonna be sprinkling in some advice second part i'm really excited for it i'm gonna be talking about what it's actually like filming with yes theory we're on below okay. him why are we filming this because yeah. <laughs> i've actually never seen anybody make this kind of video or really talk about it and the best part is that i'm not just going to be talking about it but i'm going to be showing you guys because of a crazy string of events i actually got access to some behind the scene footage that's never been seen before doing a magic show is interesting <laughs> Oh, the coolest thing I've ever seen. The last part, I'm gonna be talking about what happens after filming with them. So I'm really excited about bringing you guys into this process. I've timestamped everything below. This is going to be so fun. Grab a coffee. I also wanna go ahead and tease. If you guys wanna see more of Yes Theory on this channel, there is a video. It's gonna be exclusively on this channel that's coming out very soon. So don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see that. Here we go. Here we go, yay. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah. Is this, this, Does this work for you? This isn't scripted, by the way. So I'm gonna try not to say anything too ridiculous. Okay, part one. How I got Yes Theory's attention. Yes Theory came out with a podcast, fall of 2021, where they were talking about the future of Yes Theory. How do you think that the Yes Theory dream is evolving? And Amar and Thomas were talking about how they were wanting to bring women into more of the adventures to get the female perspective of seeking discomfort. And the way that they phrased it was, we're looking for a female adventure partner. And I immediately thought of this concept where the pitch is basically like, Yes Theory is looking for me. It's maybe a great opportunity for us to just put it out there that we are looking for women to be a part of Yes Theory and... Alex. Yes Theory is looking for me. I am not gonna lie, I was so nervous to film. Trying to act as somebody who is not, has no acting training was terrifying, but I just remember hearing this podcast and being like, I've gotta do something. <laughs> got to try. For some context, I was working on a movie at the time. I had been working in the film industry in Atlanta for about a year and a half, and I was starting to see some cracks in the walls a little bit. And while I won't go too much into my background or my story, I will tell you two things. I grew up in Orlando, Florida, which is a super weird place to be from. I've also lived, I did like a gap year out of high school. The only way that I could do it is if I fundraised to go, but I ended up volunteering as an international teacher in Japan. It completely changed my life, but I've also lived in Nashville, Atlanta, and a few other cities. The second thing is actually that I'm currently in the process of releasing a YouTube series that I'm really excited about. It's been the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Basically, it's me driving across the country. So I started in Orlando, Florida at my parents' house, and I I drove all the way to Los Angeles. I stopped in 23 cities because I started this in the year 2023. And I did this thing called rejection therapy. If you haven't heard of it, it's basically when you face your fear of rejection head on and purposefully ask questions that I think people will say no to. In every city, I have a different challenge. Some of them are like bucket list things. So in Texas, I went to NASA and asked if I could try on an astronaut suit. In New Orleans, I asked if I could ride on a float in a Mardi Gras parade. The next video I'm putting out is in Palm Springs, 
where I asked the nicest, like most luxurious hotels if I could stay for free. And in every city, I'd have to get rejected one more time than the city before. So rejected once in city one, rejected twice in city two, rejected 13 times in city 13, or I'd have to get a yes. And I did get rejected a lot. <laughs> I also got a lot more people saying yes than I ever thought. So that's what I'm currently working on. But my very first YouTube video was this audition video for Yes Theory. I'm not gonna go too far into it, but my idea was Yes Theory holds a lot of posters. <laughs> You know, I can be listening to this podcast. I can run into my roommate's bedroom. Alex is not my real roommate. He's a friend from college who actually is a YouTuber in his own right. Go check him out. But I love really deadpan comedy. So I was like, it would be just really funny if I had somebody who is super deadpan. Meredith, they're not looking for you. Yeah, I don't think that's what's happening here. I swear, no, I, 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 I don't. I basically heard them say my name. They definitely didn't say your name. And then, you know, my character just makes this poster and holds it up and I make it look like I'm all over the country looking for them. I won't be showing the whole video. That's all I'm gonna be showing. If you're curious, I'm gonna link it below. It took about two months of filming off and on to make. By the time that I finished filming and then spent a week or two editing it, I then was trying to figure out how to get Yes Theory to see it. My only idea was to try to see if I could get a group of people, you know, friends and family to DM all of the Yes Theory accounts as soon as I posted it. And I was really, really lucky. About 30 people ended up being willing to DM Yes Theory. And when I posted the video and I started sending out the video to everybody who said that they would DM them, I had maybe gotten to the halfway, so about the 15th person before I get a DM in my inbox. And it was about two hours after I posted it that was this video from Amar. Meredith, thank you for going above and beyond to create this. We absolutely loved it. I was just, where's he go? Going somewhere. But we just watched it and uh, definitely got us thinking we will be in touch very soon. We're still in Mexico. We're gonna be back at, in LA at the end of the week. And we're definitely gonna be, uh, we're gonna be discussing this video and figuring out um, what are the moves forward. Sending so much love and I can't wait to meet you in person. I remember watching that and I was in my apartment at the time in Atlanta and Amar also sent me a photo of, he and Thomas were on break at the time and he, he sent a photo of Thomas watching it. I was just like, what is happening? It's so embarrassing to talk about this because I know them now and we're friends, but also I think this is how a lot of people meet each other, you know, like Colin and Samir made a video about how they were like, we've got to meet the Yes guys. And you know, Yes Theory met Will Smith by being fans. And so like, yeah, I was such a fan. And, and I was like shaking, you know, after hearing from Amar. I don't think I've had a reaction like that before. And I'm so curious if I'll ever have that sort of reaction again with anybody. I was so excited. So I eventually got a DM being like, we have something for you, what's your email? This was in January of 2022. And I checked my email and it's an email setting up a meeting with me and Thomas. I thought it was just gonna be like me and Thomas and their producer, Alex. I don't know, I thought it would be like an interview where they were gonna ask me something. Get on the call and it's ev it's everybody. I've never had anxiety dissipate so quickly because I knew that if I was meeting everybody that that was a really good sign. They ended up asking me, hey, we'd love to film with you. Are you free these dates? Do you wanna come out and film something with us? From the time that I posted the video to the time that I was gonna be meeting everybody in person was a little bit less than a month. They didn't tell me what we were filming, hence me showing up to the yes house, not sure what we were filming. How's it going? <laughs> good to meet you. Good to meet you. How you doing? I'm good. Great. We're gonna go spend three days with wolves. Faces are like huge. Wait, are right? they that big? Uh, no, they're not that big. They're I thought they look big. like. I thought they're the size of dogs. No. No, I'm right. no, 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 no. All of my coffee has melted by the good part of the story. All right, the second part is my favorite part of the whole video. What it was actually like filming with Yes Theory. <laughs> I'm gonna lay it out how I experienced it. So from meeting them in LA, leaving to go to Apex, the Wolf Sanctuary, up until we finished filming. And I'll be focusing on four things I learned about filming with them. Oh. <laughs> Let's get started. So I met Thomas, Tommy, and Amar at the S yes house, learned what we were filming, and then the very next morning we were on the road together. Is that Meredith? What up? Hi. <laughs> Probably should have gone out and helped her carry her stuff, right? Yeah, I'm driving, so I can't. Don't get out of the car, guys. Well, it's okay, we'll, we'll handle it. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tommy's trick is to ask if you need help once you're done. You ready? It's okay, next time I'll just ask you bluntly, will you help? I'll just like, then I you can't, can't hear avoid you. It. So far away. <laughs> 
Tommy thinks I'm a little He's cranky. A little you did not sleep at all? Yeah. No. He had the worst night of sleep in years. One of the top five worst sleeps of my life, yeah. It's not, not great. <laughs> so, it's not um, good to know going into this situation. I'll be honest, I had one of the worst nights of sleep as well. <laughs> <laughs> so coffee? I had, a, I had a great night's sleep. <laughs> I remember my first thought, like my very first impression was they picked me up. I'm meeting Corey for the first time. Everyone was just immediately joking, like riffing off of each other, which was so fun. It was like such good energy. We had filmed a little bit kind of explaining what was happening. Well, to the wolves out in the middle of nowhere, we go. And then the cameras shut off. And I remember Tommy said something really funny and Tommy did like a bit back. And I remember thinking, oh no, the camera wasn't turned on for that. I didn't say anything out loud, but I just remember thinking nobody's gonna know how funny that was. I don't know, there was something about it where you're not really sure, you know, if somebody's trying to be funny when a camera's on them. But it was just kind of this moment where I was like, oh, they literally are just themselves. Just hilarious all of the time. So nobody can tell them I said this, I'll deny it. <laughs> but that would probably be the first thing I learned. Plot twist. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. Oh, this is it, 1431. Keep, Keep out. out. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was a real wolf for a sec. <laughs> I was scared. Apex Protection Project. So if you haven't seen the video, we went to this really amazing wolf sanctuary called Apex Protection Project. It's run by Paula and Steve, who I think very quickly became all of our heroes. And the very first thing we do, which leads into the second thing I learned about filming with Yes Theory, is the safety talk that Paula leads. So you guys are going to be meeting wolves and wolf dogs today. They know <laughs> that over the years, it's mostly been males that have persecuted them. They're much more comfortable with female energy. They can smell fear. There's a chemical change in your body when you're afraid. We're gonna get down low. Don't touch them on the back. Don't touch them on the head like we do with our dogs. Sound good? Give it a shot. <laughs> so lay low. Oh, I wouldn't lay low. Oh, okay. No, because you're <laughs> already wrong. Oh, already no. wrong. <laughs> All right. So the second thing is there was this moment when at the yes house they told me that we were filming with wolves and they were like, "How do you feel about animals?" And I was like, "I feel pretty chill." <laughs> you know, like I grew up in Florida, so there was alligators in my backyard basically. But I remember turning to Thomas and when we were still at the yes house and before we had left, and I was like, "Is it okay that I'm not afraid? <laughs> like I have plenty of other fears. <laughs> I'm afraid a lot, and it's my." Fear of rejection series and he was like we don't want you to pretend to be afraid ever i'm only mentioning this because when we get out of the tent where paula and steve told us all of the kind of ground rules for the wolves and we haven't met any of them yet thomas was pretty thomas was pretty afraid I think we're about to experience something we're gonna remember for the rest of our lives i'm so freaking excited i'm pretty scared i'm, I'm a little scared I, yeah, I'll be honest. Um, are you scared whole, like don't yeah. be too masculine talk i'm a little bit masculine so i'm, I'm gonna i've been gonna, a man um, for a while i've been a guy for as long as I can remember. One of his favorite books is The Way of the Superior Man. <laughs> is that a real thing? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It's just a book about, like... Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> It's, you should read it. It's actually <laughs> gotta put it on the side. Gotta gotta it. Judging the, 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 the title, it's it's not at all like. It, What's the summary it, of it? Basically, it just. Why are we filming this? Yeah. <laughs> we also had a lot of fun roasting each other. Thomas, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry for showing this to people, but it's too funny not to. All right, so there's even this part where Paula and Steve are about to introduce us to this wolf called Kona, and wolves can feel fear. What happens is if a wolf is around you and they feel fear coming off of you, it puts them on edge because they don't see anything that you should be afraid of. So Paula and Steve at one point, and I think we have this on camera, but they looked to Thomas and they were like, okay, we're either gonna bring you into Kona's cage if you're not that afraid, like you can meet her there, or we'll bring you up to this other place if you actually are afraid, cause she'll be confused if you're afraid in her house. I wanna My know, in all honesty, like, do you have like, like, how, <laughs> like, how scared are you guys really? And how much is for the camera? I'm, I'm pretty scared, but I'm all right. I can manage it, but I'm definitely... Why? <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> and to be honest, there are a lot of other YouTubers that don't live by that guideline. Even like, I listen to this one podcast with the Try Guys and they talk about how they just try to get the beats and like leave. And it was just really refreshing to, you know, look up to Yes Theory and to kind of be faced with the realization that everything that you're seeing on YouTube is the real thing, is how they actually are, is actually how they feel. <laughs> 
cut to a montage of me being scared. <laughs> I'm terrified. Oh. I'm just the most scared. I thought I would be cooler about this. Hey, yeah. Phil, dude. Why didn't you ask Corey that? <laughs> I don't know. Corey seems fine. Yeah. Meredith seems fine. Honestly, I'm fine. What's going on here? <laughs> So that was probably the second thing I learned. Again, don't tell them I said this. But before we get to the third thing, I wanna go ahead and tell you guys that our goal in being here is that by the end of the second day, we're hoping that the wolves feel comfortable and trust us enough to go on a sunset hike with us completely off leash. But this first day, we're mostly focusing on meeting the 16 wolf dogs individually. So we meet Kona, who is a nibbler. He's an ankle nibbler, so we don't want you to- He loves really. love handles. Make sure your ankle. pants are pulled down over the side. Ankle nibbler. Yeah, you cover those things. <laughs> and we meet the biggest wolf dog, Sarge, who really likes Thomas. Holy crap. <laughs> I just got kissed by a wolf. And we meet their only full wolf, Riggs, who is pretty majestic. <laughs> And to be honest, the third lesson I learned was that in these kind of moments, and especially while meeting the alpha wolf dog Thor, which I'll get to in a second, it just doesn't feel like we're filming. Kona, Neo, and Strider are what we call high content, so they're mostly wolf. Um, very, very little dog in them. And Riggs is no dog. Riggs is no dog at all. No dog. And why is he alone? He's not, he has a mate. He's got his girlfriend down oh. there. The reason why we have wire on top of his house, notice that it's like, it's 12 foot high there because he could jump from his tower or over the fence. He is just so agile. But here's the interesting thing, just to finish the story. How much memory card space do we have? 19. 19, 19 minutes? 19 minutes. One of the things that they do really well that helps kind of facilitate this everybody is who they are when the camera's rolling and not rolling is that the camera feels invisible. And there's a really good part about that and there's a, a not so great part about that. And the good part is that it allows people to be really present, which allows these really authentic moments to happen. So you have dog uh, wolves that live inside the house, <laughs> and that's okay for us to go inside. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! Who is this? Thor. Thor. They really <laughs> like Meredith a lot. <laughs> when Thor is putting his paw out, what does that mean? It's kind of a way of uh, bonding. So he's kind of holding your hand by doing that. And you know, also the guys would constantly like pass the camera off to each other in a very organic way. It kind of just felt like an extension of their arm. Whoever is holding the camera is still really a part of the conversation. You know, when Tommy swings the camera around and says his like little joke to the camera, I think especially coming from my background, I was so used to, if there was a camera, there was a first assistant camera too, pulling focus and a second assistant camera slating, a boom up, sometimes a dolly grip, like it was hundreds of people. And it felt like very much like, you were filming and everything had to be perfect. And it, if it wasn't, you did a second take, you did a third take, you did 18 takes. When I was filming with Yes Theory, it, there was no like take two, you know, it was like you just were living this experience and the camera was capturing it. And if the camera didn't capture it, oh well. And what's funny is that the bad thing about having the camera basically be invisible is that you forget that you're filming. Thomas does this thing and he's so good at it where he'll say what's going on internally of like, oh Oh my gosh, I'm so afraid, but also describing externally what's happening. So like, he'd be like, we are entering this, we are here. Or he'd be like, we are sitting on a couch with wolves. We are inside your home and there are four wolf dogs and a pit bull raised by wolves. Which is not a normal thing for people to do. And I got this really cool opportunity where I got to give notes on the edit before they posted the video. And using those moments to guide the story is so helpful. And I realized that I did not do that as much as I could have. And it's funny because it's not something that you really know to do unless you see the footage or unless, you know, you start doing YouTube yourself. And so now it's really natural. Now it comes really easy. But if you guys end up filming with Yes Theory, just like practice that a little bit. It's gonna feel weird, but it'll help. It's kind of like a muscle that you build. Thor and I are boys now. Meredith paid the way though, definitely paid the way. You have a handshake with Thor, right? Boys have handshakes? Yeah, we have handshakes. I just kind of want to see. <laughs> boys have handshakes? Yeah, if your boys was only, yeah. There's that there handshake. it is. Ooh. You didn't know that, Meredith? Thor, that was our <laughs> handshake. Oh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Nothing hard for me. This is home for the night. Right next to the howling wolves. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the uh, wolf trap. Oh, uh, glad it's next to my bed. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy's little bed. Dobby. Dobby, Dobby. <laughs> Dobby sleep in the corner. <laughs> I thought you didn't watch Harry Potter. I finished reading Harry Potter and Half-Life Prince. Oh, nice. On the plane. How um, many books are there? 
So you guys haven't read? Uh-uh. I will wow. redact <laughs> all of my Harry Potter references. I no, I watched it. I didn't read it. Oh, okay. You didn't read it. Yeah. We'll get you a sock. I can't read. We'll get you a sock. <laughs> I can't read it. It was actually really sweet because the way that Thomas, Tommy, and Corey all interact with each other, it honestly reminded me of my friend group in college. So that was just so fun to be a part of and to be included in. And it kind of bleeds into the next thing. Living with wolves, day two. So we start the second day off by drinking coffee in one of the enclosures. We spend all morning learning what each wolf eats for their raw diet. We help actually feed them. We're sort of nervous. <laughs> they all can see us right now with, I know, with their food. Meredith is getting a giant bowl of meat. <laughs> Yum. And before we get ready to go on the sunset hike, where we'll be going with two wolves off leash, Thomas starts to become more comfortable with the wolves. The wolves become more comfortable with us. And honestly, this part of my video I knew would be hard because before I mention the fourth and last thing I learned about filming with them and get into part three, there's a million other things I could say about this experience too. But I also know that nothing quite captures the essence of this experience like the video that Yes Theory makes, which doesn't just include more of Paula and Steve's story, how much of a light they are and what they're doing to protect endangered wolves, but it also perfectly captures how magical, grounding, and honestly spiritual it felt to get to the top of these mountains by their house right at sunset and finally see Riggs and his girlfriend Selena off leash for the first time. Because though they were captive born and Paula and Steve rescued them, here we got to witness how beautiful it is to see them run completely wild and free. The most beautiful thing yeah. that I've seen in a really long time. This is what you expected when we called you and we're like, let's, let's do it. No, this is so much better. Really? So after staying out there for as long as we could, we all hiked back to Paula and Steve's house. And though I promised to come back to that moment on the sunset hike because there's an epiphany I had there that changed the trajectory of my life, I wanna go ahead and get to the fourth thing, which is that though the Yes Theory video does such a good job capturing the essence of this experience, there's always some really amazing things left on the cutting room floor. Paula and Steve are amazing. And Steve actually can do magic tricks. Steve did a magic trick with me. He did a magic trick with Tommy and Thomas and he did a magic trick with Corey. So this is like a really fun behind the scenes moment that I'll, I'll show you guys some scenes from that. So do you ever see a magician, like they do that, like, you know, they, they take it in one hand, they go like that and disappear. And then Pretty they come, cool. And then over here, right? <laughs> this is kind of like that, but, <laughs> but we're gonna use a can. Okay, oh, if you hit the sweet spot, What? Okay. What? You can kind of hear it. Like, nothing on the bottom. Yeah. Sometimes you can kind of hear it when it... Oh. Do you hear that? That's annoying. Yeah. That's, I can't figure this out. That's I'm gonna, crazy. I'm gonna, I shook it up a little bit, so I'm going to stand back for that. Did I get you? Oh. Now I got a glass. Oh, I got a glass oh, over okay. there. Like, no. Wait, sa 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 sa. What? How's it cool? Sa 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 sa. This makes no sense. <gasps> Stop. Now, here's the weird part. It does not fit through the hole. So you guys can see, see, you can shine a light in there. That's the like coolest today. thing I've ever seen. Make sure your signature's on that coin. Signature on there? Yeah, I saw yeah, it's it. mine. I saw it. My yeah. drawing makes no, no sense. Can we have you to really not open. just take it Dude, off? No, it doesn't fit. Steve, see. why are you so cool? You know, we're gonna see how connected you really are, okay? So I want you to look at each other. Look at what you're wearing. Like really get get the idea that you're like looking out of each other's eyes at yourself. Does that oh. make sense? And this is what I want you to do. In a moment, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do some simple things. Like um, I'm gonna have you close your eyes. I'm gonna touch you, like either on your arm, on your head. I might I might tap you on your shoulder. You know, whatever that is. I just want you to remember remember where I touched you, how many times I touched you. And I'm gonna have each of you close your eyes in a moment because I don't want you to see 
what's happening to the other person. It's going to be on camera, you're going to get to see it. Close your eyes, and then you're going to face the audience. Okay? I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. If you felt me touch you anywhere on your face, point to that place. <laughs> Don't listen to the audience. Don't listen to anything they say. Put your arms down. That's really good. You're both doing really great. Interesting. I'm so sorry. I'll be quiet. If you felt me touch you anywhere on one of your arms, point to that place. And, and with your, with that same finger, how many times did it touch you? Just hold it, hold your fingers up. One, two, okay, good, 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 good. One more. Okay, put your arms down, you're both doing great. I'm gonna show you one more thing. If you felt me poke you anywhere on your body, try and point to that place if you can reach it. That's great. Okay, open your eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question. On the scale of one to ten, how sure are you that I touched you? Oh, 100 percent. Ten? One hundred percent. Ten. On the ten scale of one to ten, how sure are you that I touched you? Ten. Okay. I'm gonna ask you guys sitting there, who did I touch? Who did I touch? Thomas. Did I go anywhere near him? <laughs> Not anywhere was I close. All the way over here. Yeah. What? He wasn't even close <laughs> to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, pick one. Can you see the date or the state on that? It says 1977. Make a mark, a signature, whatever you want on one side. And then on the other side, do something different. I meant to draw so a mustache, we, but it just what looks like a right. smile. So, you know what kind of cord it is, and you just wrote on both sides. There. Right? Hold it in your hand. Okay. That's okay, gonna I'm going to ask you a question. This is a serious question, right? I'm very nervous. Look at me. Do you believe that you can bend that quarter in one hand? That I can bend it? Yeah, or even in two hands. Do you believe you can bend that quarter? No. No? Absolutely I... not. Zero percent chance. See, I... I... <laughs> Zero percent chance. I have chance. never met a person or seen, and I've researched this online, I've never seen a person that can bend a quarter in one hand. It takes a massive amount of strength. Like pounds per pressure to bend a quarter in your hand, right? You agree, right? Yeah. But here's the next question. Do you believe that anything is possible if you put your mind to it? There's like 50% chance that no, that's come on. true. Come on. <laughs> Just say yes. Yes. No, you don't have to say yes if you don't believe it. But I want you to think about it. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you what you're gonna do. In a minute, I'm gonna have you hold your hand like this, okay? Okay, I'm not gonna have you squeeze it. I don't want you to squeeze it tight. I just want you to hold it, okay? Okay. So put the quarter in your hand. Put it up. Close, turn it over. Hold it like that, okay. So now, I want you to think. Don't try and bend it with your hand because you can't. What I want you to do, I want you to think about it bending in your hand. And then a slow, work with me, okay. it's okay, right. you trust, trust, just believe. Believe. That's all you have to do. Start to squeeze, start to squeeze, think about it bending. Does he feel warm? Um. A little bit in there? Do you feel anything happening? Not really. Turn, your hand, turn your hand over and look at it. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I want you to take that quarter, put it by your bed. And every morning when you wake up, I want you to look at it. And I want you to realize that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Wait, I want to see this. Can we verify? It is. Your quarter, same date, yeah, same a little rubbed off. on both sides, same pictures. 1977, Kentucky. <laughs> is it real? Can you bend it back? With a hammer. No, I can't bend it back. <laughs> hey! 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 Hey!
<laughs> wow, wow, wow. That's our application video. <laughs> now that we're at the end, you're probably all wondering <laughs> if I got the job. When we got back to LA, I very quickly realized they were pretty over their head. Amar had just filmed his last video before diving into post-production for Iceman. Matt was off writing the book, so all of the filming was on Thomas. And Thomas, in a month, he hadn't announced this yet, but in a month was moving to France. I remember Thomas was like, yeah, I'm moving to France. And I remember saying something like, why am I here? <laughs> Not like in a bad way, but just, I was like, this is a lot happening. It became very obvious that bringing somebody in, especially during that time, whether it was me or whether they continued the search would be very complicated. But what I've learned is that a lot of times we can look at life in a very binary way of like, I'm gonna get to partner with them and my life's gonna change forever, or I'm not gonna get to partner with them. And my life's not gonna change. And what I've found through this process is that there's this third really magical option available. And sometimes it's like the best one. And for me, when we did the sunset hike and Thomas, who's one of my heroes, is standing beside me. I just had this moment where I was like, why am I not doing this? This mixture of getting to tell a really socially impactful story, getting to do it in the format that I love, which is film, and helping facilitate and build up a community of dreamers. When I realized that partnering with them at this time wasn't going to be possible, I started asking myself, well, how can I still do that? Because I felt in my bones that I was supposed to be doing that. So it took me, I want to say eight to 10 months before I decided to start my channel. I had a lot of fears, but now I feel like I found something that's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. And I think I just want to end by saying that yes, there is officially transitioned fully to Paris. They're starting this really amazing, beautiful chapter that I'm so excited to get to watch unfold. And there's one thing I've learned from meeting a lot of people in the Yes Fam and watching a lot of women show up in their videos. I just, I hope that you guys feel encouraged to go out and to make your own stories because I really fully believe after doing rejection therapy, anything is possible. If you're willing to ask the universe for it, whatever it is, if you're willing to try, if you're willing to maybe embarrass yourself. So thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. I've got some really exciting stuff on this channel coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.